not us, because once again, that's a boat they made sure we missed. People are going to make billions of billions of dollars. Like, why is that not something that they're, no, I feel like those kind of conversations, the conversations we cannot forget. That's why I brought up Flint. We cannot forget about, about Flint. Those people need reparations, which leads me to another thing that you're talking about right now that's a, that I'm really fascinated that people should know about. Um, you're representing the Lanier family for the Renty slave pictures, which honestly is going to be a landmark case that is going to start the conversations for reparations, which they're not talking about in D.C., but they know that, you know, you guys are prepping. This, is, this may be the most pivotal legal battle that this country has ever seen because the amount the economists have shown the amount of what reparations will be owed to black Americans, it is going to, it could change, you know, it could change the, the surface and, the, and the, just the plateau that we have been stuck on for the whole community, for the world. You know, the idea of if we ever were to see, rep, receive reparations, even if, you know, there's been talks I've heard of, of having African American, people of African American descent have no or lower taxes for a, a period of time, if you didn't have to pay taxes on your check as a descendant of African Americans, all of a sudden your job at Burger King, all of a sudden your job at Walmart, it now becomes a situation where you have extra money, where you can educate your kids, which I think is a really important thing for us. We have to educate ourselves. We have to, that is our, our key. And that's why my mom always told us, that's what your parents told us. That is our key out of our situation. And so the so please talk a little bit about Harvard and what's going on with that. Explain the Certainly. case. Yeah, and, and and before I say that, Kenya, I, I want to thank you because you always found a way to work in these uh, themes and these important issues with your shows. Uh, I, I remember watching Blackish, and I think the episode was "Who Is Mike Brown?" Mm -hmm. Man, that was so profound because a lot of people outside our community don't get to know things about us. But they all watch Blackish because mm -hmm. it's one of the top shows on television. And so when you do that, you yeah. just don't know what a difference you're making. Malcolm X talked about how TV was one of the most powerful drugs ever created. He said that it have people thinking things in their subconscious that they're not even aware that they're thinking. And so when you keep putting those sort of messages in about Mike Brown life matter, about Flint, about reparations, it just matters so much. And I want to just digress for a second to say thank you for always using your platform when it matters most. Thank you, my brother. I feel like that is, all of this is blessings. Every day we get to open our eyes is a blessing. And if we have any sort of platform, I don't care if you're a teacher, I don't care if you're a healthcare worker, I don't care if you're an attorney, I don't care if you, you know, are a, you know, a, jan a janitorial worker, we all have to have, use our voices to try and push things forward. So thank you, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for like literally, you know, always supporting the show, always being there. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, skip, I, I don't think people know about the Harvard case and what the okay. implications of it are. So Tam Tamara Lanier is the great, great, great granddaughter of the slave Renty. Mm -hmm. Renty was brought to America and he was what many believe one of the last Africans of African descent. You have to remember in 1803, the uh, importation of Africans into America was outlawed. And so all the slaves after that time were the products of a lot of rape, incest by the slave masters taking advantage of our, our sisters, our mothers, our aunts and nieces. And so this racist professor named Louis Agassi in Harvard, who was renowned, Kenya, he was on the same level as Charles Darwin. In fact, he was the major opponent of Darwin who said survivor of the fittest, that, you know, it's not about skin color or anything like that. It's about evolution and natural origins. But he said, no, no, Louis. He said, I can prove the white men from Europe, from the Caucasus Mountains, are superior 
than everybody else. And he wrote legal theories about it. And because he was so celebrated of a professor, of an educator, people believed it. So while Abraham Lincoln was going around talking about Emancipation Proclamation, Louis Agassiz, this Harvard professor, and Harvard was getting the money from the Southern plantation owners to advance these theories, as well as the Northern textile factories who were all making money off of slavery. Remember, America was a very young country and we had become one of the most prosperous, richest nations in the world off of slavery and the backs of black people. So they did free, not want free labor, free, free labor. And, and, you know, we talk about the prison industrial complex. That's an extension of this whole mentality that, you know, uh, Free labor and slavery is what made us prosperous, and they believe as a country, as a country, and, and it's a multi-billion industry, multi-billion dollar industry. Now, can you going to say something before I continue? Yeah, I just you know like I really want to you know the concise and you please add on this. I want people to understand like this is my my job is sort of always getting to a point and selling. You know what I'm saying? I want to sell this so people impactfully understand what you're saying. The, the notion there has never been an, an, an indictment or a, a prosecutable case for slavery in the history of this country because slavery was not legal. The greatest of human atrocity has ever happened, the most horrible human atrocity has ever happened, no one's ever gone to jail, not one person, because it's never, it was not illegal. And now think about that. As horrible as the Holocaust was, as horrible as, as a thing as that happened, those people get to put a face to their evil. If you're a Nazi, I don't care if you're 105 years old and we find out about it, we're gonna come drag you out your house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As a black, as African-American, a person of African descent in this country, no one, if someone, you know, there's no law against it. So someone might morally say it was wrong, but there's never been a legally, you know, binding case against this. So the, the, the thing that makes your case against Harvard, I don't wanna, I wanna get into a mod, Quickly, but the thing that makes your case, I want people to understand, so important, is that it stands to be the first prosecutable case against a, a an industry, a foundation, which you know, a, a, which is Harvard, that they yeah. said that these pictures that were taken against a person who had no rights, these pictures mm -hmm. and were used to make millions upon millions upon tens of millions of dollars, were not that person's property. These pictures yeah. that were he was stripped down and taken of his clothes, and the family says. All they asked Harvard to say, I don't want the money. I just want the pictures back. Harvard yep. said no. Harvard said no. And when they said no, what they did unknowingly was set about, and this is why your case is so important, the case that sets the, 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 the standard for what could become our argument for reparations because you, there's no denying that what happened was beyond every law possible. And, yeah. and, and them refusing to give those pictures back, they had no rights. The, they had no right to take the pictures from, but they felt like the person had no rights. And so they're still saying the person had no rights. And your winning of this case sets the platform for what could be a multi-trillion dollar argument for our people. Absolutely. And, and to try to frame it just very simply, this picture, literally, these slave pictures are believed to be some of the earliest photographs taken in America and certainly they believe the earliest photographs of African slaves ever taken, they call them daguerreotypes. And that was the first time they were having photographs. So Harvard has possession of them. Miss Lanier traced her roots and they can prove that Papa Renty is their grandfather through all these uh, probate files and all this family history. And all they're saying, Kenya, is exactly what the Jews said after the Holocaust. You all were able to recover everything that was rightfully yours after this immoral, this unethical uh, dynamic called the Holocaust. Why can't black people recover our rights? And if the courts allow this landmark decision to go through, which we believe it's going to be because we're on the right side of history, can you bear right. and we know this. And once we have that precedence, they teach us in first year law school, Precedence is the key. Once you have precedence, we want the laws to be consistent. And therefore, the fact that we know 
Harvard is going to be embarrassed over and over again as they try to defend the indefensible because their professor was trying to prove the inferiority of black people when he stripped, rented down naked because he was a pure African. He didn't have right. any white blood in him. And he wanted to show that we were more prone to agrarian work and uh, we were more prone to be in the fields and so forth. So he stripped his daughter Delia down and you see a tear in her eye when she's naked being made to stand in front of these white men while they take pictures of her to prove her inferiority as a human being. But yet these photographs are their family photographs. And Harvard is saying, no, no, you don't have a right to these pictures. So 400 years, I'm sorry, 150 years later, they're saying rent is still isn't free. Rent is still is a slave. So we're going to get the Harvard to give these pictures back. And that is going to lay the first case for reparations in America because it will be the first time that uh, descendants of slaves have ever recovered anything from an American institution Listen based to that. on slavery. Say that again. Say that again. This it, will would be be, the... it will be the first time that descendants of slaves have ever received any form of reparation of any kind from an American institution. That is, that is profound. Now, we could talk about this for, for hours, that in particular for hours. Lastly, before, because I want, I want, we want to talk to Midas, um, you know, we're going through 